Welcome to the 2023 Lexus ES. As you're entering the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. That'll be greatly appreciated. Finally, there is a 2023 model year car that I've covered that has some legitimate changes to it, aside from just a price hike or an extra year of free maintenance. No, we have some real changes, and I think this will make many luxury car shoppers happy. So let's get started. First of all, they are now offering two separate F-Sport packages, one called the F-Sport Design for the people who just like the way the F-Sport package looks, or you can get the F-Sport Handling package as well, which actually adds in the real handling upgrades along with the looks. You also have a redesigned center console to make room for more intuitive technology, which we will talk more about later. This vehicle will also add in the new Lexus interface multimedia system across the ES family, so no more touchpad. We actually have a touch screen. You have two separate options for a touch screen. So let's go into more details with this 2023 ES. And we still have your three powertrain options. You have the ES250 with the four cylinder, the naturally aspirated four cylinder engine and all wheel drive. You also have the ES350 with that naturally aspirated V6 engine. And you also have the ES300H, which is the model I recommend. Pretty much the smoothest hybrid product that I have ever tested. I would personally get the ES300H in the ultra luxury trim level for around $53,000 or $54,000. I truly think that is the way to go with the Lexus ES because you're also getting around 40 MPG in the city and the highway. And I just think that's a win-win for everyone. So those are your three powertrain options. The car is going to start at around $42,490 for a base model ES250 all-wheel drive. Keep in mind, you have to get that puny little four-cylinder model to get all-wheel drive. You can't get the all-wheel drive on the ES350 or the ES300H, just so you know. Moving on, let's talk about that interior space because that's where we get the biggest changes i feel like and the changes that i feel like many people wanted with the es we're finally getting that here we have a redesigned center console with a new sunglass holder and a new location for the cup holder and we also have available wireless charging standard we have here an 8 inch screen but we also have an optional 12.3 inch touch screen and these screens will have smartphone like anti-glare technology which is a massive blessing and something else I really appreciate is the fact that these infotainment screens whether you get the base model 8 inch or the 12.3 inch screen you will be getting wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto I don't even think the 2023 LC 500 has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So these are some phenomenal changes. I think many people will appreciate this. And of course, they did get rid of the touchpad, which I personally never had an issue with. But this is what everyone has been asking for and Lexus delivered. So I think most people will be happy. Other things to note about these new infotainment screens, you, you still have your voice assistants and you can say things like, hey, Lexus, and that'll wake up the, the, the vehicle. It'll be like a Siri-like system if you will so you can talk to the car naturally to get uh, certain commands done you're also going to have a subscription based destination assistance service cloud navigation and you can pay up for your own wi-fi connectivity trial as well if you're into that and like i mentioned with the two different f-sport trims obviously the f-sport design is like it sounds it's just the design package if you love the way the es looks in the F-Sport trim with the 19 inch black wheels, with the blacked out grills, etc. You can just get that F-Sport design package. But if you want the true handling package, you can pay up more for that. It'll come with your Sport Plus mode, your custom drive modes, your intuitive parking assistance. That's actually gonna be standard with the F-Sport models. You're also going to get a F-Sport tuned adaptive variable suspension a heated F-Sport steering wheel, unique aluminum trim and aluminum pedals. So is the F-Sport handling package worth it? Yes, it is. Starting from 2021 and up, I've noticed that the F-Sport trim levels, the F-Sport handling models actually do a great job in improving the handling while not sacrificing what makes the ES great, which is that buttery smooth ride quality. So you get that silky smooth ride and the F-Sport handling truly does improve the handling. It's not a gimmick, it's not nonsense. I do like the way the ESF Sport handling packages drive. 
So if you want it, you can certainly pay up for it. Me personally, like I said, I think the ultra luxury trim level is the way to go. That is a near flagship-like experience and quality, and that's why the ES is genuinely one of my most favorite cars for the money. For around 50K, I really do think the ES is pretty much the one of the best luxury products and pretty much one of the best Lexus products as well in the lineup. I prefer it to the NX, the RX SUVs. I think the ES is better than all the SUV products. The only thing I don't like about the ES is the practicality. Obviously, a sedan will never be as practical as an SUV, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. The trunk space is decent, but I don't like the fact that you can't fold down the rear seats of the ES. This is a front-wheel drive sedan. I'm fully aware of why you can't fold down the seats. It's because Lexus ran their, their bracing to improve their handling through the rear seats which is very stupid. That is not a good design choice. That's fine for a rear wheel drive sedan. With most rear wheel drive sedans, you cannot fold down the rear seats because they actually do run the bracing and the bars through the rear seats. So that's the reason why you can't fold down the, the seats in a rear wheel drive sedan. But with a front wheel drive sedan, that typically isn't the case, except with the ES. They should have found another way to brace and make the vehicle handle better not run it through the rear seats because that really hinders the practicality of a sedan. I believe there is a pass-through in the middle, but that's not the same thing as actually folding the seats down. What's interesting is I believe the 2021 Avalon that I tested actually had folding rear seats. Not sure why the Lexus ES doesn't because the Avalon is also a great handling sedan from Toyota. Now moving on, the Mark Levinson 17 speaker, 1800 watt surround sound, that is absolutely worth it. Definitely try getting it because that sound system is part of the reason why the ES is so good for the money. The ML audio is truly one of the best I've ever listened to. So if you love your music, definitely get it. Even if you don't love music, just get it anyway because it'll help with the resale value of your car. It'll just make it more desirable. Now for 2023, we have 11 exterior colors. However, the ultrasonic Blue Mica 2.0, that's only going to be exclusive to the F Sport models. We also have some new trim like the Ash Bamboo that's going to be new for 2023 and also a color known as Macadamia that's going to be replacing the Rich Cream as far as interior colors go. The ES will come standard with Lexus Safety System 2.5 Plus and I really do like the Lexus Safety Systems. They work really well seamlessly so I'm glad that they are offering that as standard and that's pretty much everything that you need to know about the 2023 ES. The car looks identical from the outside as the 2022. Really the only change is with the interior space and how they have redesigned the new center console to accommodate their sunglass holders to change where the cup holder is and all that good stuff and obviously with the new touch screens that they are offering and no more touch pads. Those are your main changes. Let me know in the comment section if you are going to be purchasing a 2023 ES and if you like the changes that were made here. If you are going to be ordering this, I did hear that there is some type of Mark Levinson shortage, I believe. People who were ordering the Lexus NX SUV, they told me that they had to wait a little bit longer from the factory to get their Lexus NX with the Mark Levinson audio system. There's a shortage for everything now. They're just using that to ramp up the prices of really everything. Um, so that seems to be the case here as well. Uh, let me know if you're ordering a car right now, what the situation is with the Mark Levinson. Please keep us updated. Also, if you want to save money on ordering a new Lexus ES, I did partner with a company known as Auto Companion. They're located in Washington, D.C. They can help you get at least 7% off on the 2022 Lexus ES, and they can save you some money on a 2023 order as well. We've done a lot of business with them. They're phenomenal to work with. There is a broker fee of around $500, but you can take $50 off of that if you sign up with my link, which is in the description box of this video. Go ahead and check that out. Thanks again for watching, take care, and goodbye.